in in jammu the first historical narrative appears at 1847 in 1847 in case of kashmir we have the historical narrative in the form of raj tarangni a brilliant text 12th 13th century but when you look at ladakh there are enough evidence that the uh, the entire idea of textualizing the historical memory uh, started way back there in the 8th 9th century that is and, and this credit has never been given and if you look at the way the history has been narrativized then you realize how close how integral this part was there with the entire indian subcontinent and let me tell you and why this um, where from this kind of misconceptions and distortion of uh, distortion in history it started it started all because bulk of the literature which is available there in the case of ladakh has been made available by people either uh, uh, Mor people uh, uh, belonging to moravian uh, uh, missionaries the the other colonial uh, authorities we have complete absence of in anything coming from the locality itself and and the the first time the the, the person who pointed out of the existence of a historical continuous historical narrative even anterior to 8th century is uh, uh, a moravian uh, uh, traveler that is cosmo de coros and he lived there in Jan uh, janskar and upper kanwar for about 10 years and there he pointed out the existence of a historical narrative when cunningham came here hmm, he tried to locate the, the manuscript and then he, he was not able to. And then he, 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 when he was gathering the information, the information that, that he got was that during the invasion of the Ladakh by Ali Mir, Muhammad chief of Skardu, that is in 16th century, all the temples and monasteries of the country were said to be destroyed and the library was thrown into Indus. And this was a very deliberate one because if you want to, Kill the culture, you kill the historical memory first. So this was done. And after that, a process of rewriting of history also starts, which is clearly visible there in the case of a smaller uh, uh, territory. I'll come to that. But now, but while this was going on, the, the Frankie possibly was one of the earliest historians. He also did not belong to Ladakh. He, in sometime in 1906, uh, he wrote a book on Tibet and later on uh, uh, Vogel, who translated the entire inscriptions of Himachal, he along with uh, uh, Frankie, they worked on the entire history which came out into volume and uh, as a special memoir. And in that, what they did, they, 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 they translated, they first collected the manuscript all the historical narrative and the historical narrative which they 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 uh, collected and translated into english one was annals of senge nambyal then the minor chronicles of janskar guz chitgaon sud and, and several others and they were all published and in in that there was also a history of the ladakh region that, that, that is the longest one and history of ladakh region you have the history of ladakh starting from 9th century but he, th this fellow is absolutely dismissive, uh, dismissive about the entire history till 16th century. He says that before 16th century, whatever was written seemed to be more unreal character, uh, some kind of construction of through fiction, hmm. the real history. But he also, he, at the same time, he says, we cannot give the his historic attribute, historical credibility to the account. But at the same time, whatever they write is very interesting. And it is these takes translation, and, and I'm, I'm telling you on the basis of my uh, reading, 90% of the work which comes on uh, 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 Ladakh is largely based on that. And what has happened? Two things, two stereotypes which has been uh, bandied about and have become very popular in, uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the extent of acquiring the status of exomatic truth. Mm, is one that the Buddhist centric approach to Ladakh. I mean, the the discussion on the, the state of Ladakh or Buddhism is considered to be one and the same. But the fact of, as if no religion, other religion existed. And it emerges because the moment you start 
basing your account on these narratives, these narratives, the creator of these narratives were primarily lamas in person. So apparently, the, the, it is very clear that they are reflecting on the Buddhist perspective. But even in that, if you, if you start scrutinizing the material, you can see the traces of the Brahmanical, the, the, the contact, the, the uh, entire how much before Buddhism came here, possibly the Brahmanism was one of the earliest religion to reach here. And one of the evidence of this comes from a very interesting anecdote in this. There is a conflict between the, the description of a conflict between Buddhism and Brahmanism. Hmm. What does it in, indicate? This and this ha, this has happened not only in this region; it happens in every region. If there is an arrival arrival of a new religion, the there is a conflict, then reconciliation, and that is how everything goes on. The legend is constructed. It is recorded there in this. And the evidence that you are pointing out, nobody talks about these kind of evidences. And the, the best evidence, the, 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 uh, uh, which nobody can uh, uh, refute, politically we can always claim that this was always part of the larger Indian uh, geographical conception. A start from Indus Valley, what Indus Valley? A start from the prehistoric age. If you look at the compare the tool typology of the Punjab region and, and, and the mother days, you would find great similarity between the prehistoric sites and there. There was a, there is a, there was an evidence of constant migration from that area to this area and this area to that area. And that is how the initial routes were created. It is these are basically the prehistoric route. From prehistoric time, Indus Valley is known to everybody. Come to Early Vedic, uh, Vedic literature, hmm? everybody, anybody who has uh, read Sapta Sindhu, uh, the, so, sorry, the Nadi Stuti would know about Sapta Sindhu. Come to the period of 6th century BC, hmm? the, the, the entire Uttar Path, Dakshin Path route, hmm? and the first empire, the Mauryas, the Asukas, you have the evidence, then you have the, the Kaniska, it was part of their political dispensation. So politically, and, and even <laughs> Lalita Aditya is another example. It, this territory was always there in the larger geographical conceptions of Indian, ancient Indian geographer. And, and, and the, the people out here were more familiar with the Vedic and the Puranic tradition than any, than the, the, any tradition which came from Central Asia. And let me cite you a very good example which would testify the argument which I am making. In Rig Ved, we have the, the famous Purushut, which talks about the origin of Varna and things like that. The same thing has been repeated there in the history of Ladakh. Hmm. In, in Chronicles, it is uh, there are three portions. The first portion is the cosmological portion. And if you read the cosmological portion hmm, and start uh, 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 substituting the geographical description, you would realize, you would think that you are possibly re reading the Puranas. It is, you have the reference of Meru Parvat, you have the same story about the inundation and the creation, you have the same, the same story about the creation of Varnas, you have the same stories about the, the, the color distinction which is found there in uh, Ramayana, where are these coming from? Because one thing we must remember, politically you can conquer the country, any area. But to conquer mentally, at the level of idea, it takes thousands and thousands of years. And the fact that in their narration, when they are talking about the origin of their own universe, they are more borrowing from the tradition which was part of the Madhya Des, rather than any other country. There are several other instances which can clearly indicate that Ladakh was always part of the larger geographical thinking of ancient India thinker. And the second thing which generally people talk about and everybody also, uh, uh, even in, in many of the paper, the Central Asian orientation. When you create historical narrative, hmm, when you create historical narrative, you also reflect your geographical horizon. 
All right. And the area in which the history of Ladakh, if you read the history of Ladakh, the area they are talking about is Mandi, hmm, Kashmir, hmm, Nepal. The, the, the other set, they, they are not referring, uh, there are uh, several other territory they are referring to and they all are part of India, not Central Asia. So even in their geography, hmm, India was embedded. And culturally, it was considered important for them hmm, to under-emphasize their connective connection, their cultural connections with, with India rather than with any other territory. And what else, what other evidence do you require? It is the same Frankie who talks about uh, discovery of hundreds of inscriptions and all the inscriptions are there in Pali, Prakrit or even Sanskrit. Fine. Who was the custodian of Sanskrit? Who brought the, I mean, it, it did not come from uh, uh, Central Asia Sanskrit. Hmm. It came from the Madhya Desh. Hmm. And those inscriptions, he just refers to that inscriptions, little realizing. And if you closely follow the, the geographical distribution and uh, map them, do a, uh, some kind of historical cartographic exercise, you would realize that there was a larger area which was basically a Sanskritic zone. So this is the, the, the and this is the the evidence which nobody generally people do not talk about the Moravians and the others are not talking about. And our entire fallacy lies in the fact that we are still hmm, basing our narrative largely on these the the uh, either Frankies, the the other uh, missionaries, or there is one person, Karl Marx, who also ex extensively commented on that. It is not the same Karl Marx. It, again, he was a Mor uh, Moravian uh, uh, part of Moravian mission. And these things have never been talked about in the case of Ladakh. Hmm. And I, I, I don't think this is part of an accident. It is a part of how you deliberately marginalize the ancient past of a region by putting into focus, putting into prominence a particular kind of literature and try to give a particular kind of orientation. Look at the archaeological material which have been found here. Till date, nobody has done a mass I mean, the, the, the try to articulate ideas on the basis of archaeological sources. And these archaeological sources are well located in time and space. If you start using those archaeological evidences, the, the evidence which is coming from the field, the, 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 the kind of local legend which are there, huh, then possibly we will have altogether different pictures. And then the idea that at any point of time, we were not part of a larger the, the, the geographical concept uh, of India, nobody would be able to even put an argument. Because once it is embedded in your psyche, in your thought process, it, 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 it is a clear indication of your long durée contact. Because, I mean, you can uh, conquer somebody politically for a 10 years, 20 years, 50 years. But to conquer men mentally, it, it requires. And the entire narrative, the, and especially the history of La Ladakh, which is built, is basically a carbon copy of what is known as Itihas Puran tradition in the context of India. If you look at the genealogical portion, you would realize it is the same model which is being borrowed. And... Surprisingly, one of the ruler of Tibet, in, uh, and it is written there in that uh, uh, narrative of Ladakh, Prasenjit, the third son, say, son of Prasenjit is considered to be the founder of Tibetan dynasty there, Tibetan kingdom there. I mean, the, wh what these indications are, and I'm, I'm the, I have these facts. And I'm thankful to the organizer for uh, giving me the invitation because earlier my uh, understanding of Ladakh region was basically exploratory. It is only when invitation came, which came a little late for both of us, we started putting our thought together. And then I realized that this is possibly one of the area that needs to be explored. We must understand what are the roots of all these stereotypes which exist about 
Ladakh. Still, Ladakh is seen as a, some kind of exotic land. If you look at the Western literature, and surprisingly, there is always, every year, there used to be a conference here. And in that conference, most of the literature, most of I mean, good paper, but most of the paper would revolve around religion. The, the, and and, and the, the total picture that emerges is basically the mystic land. The reminder of the same Orientalist perspective. It is a mystic land, huh? alien, I mean, mystic land, which is loved and hated at the same time. It is some kind of paradise, but a paradise which has fallen into wrong hand. Huh? People, I mean, the, the person who wrote this uh, book, Where Three Empires Meet, look at his hand, his description. He is describing as a, I mean, the fantastic land, exotic land, everything. But when it comes to people, the description is entirely different. So this, these are my uh, argument would be that it, it, the time has come. We have enough material. We have e enough material, and even the existing material needs to be read from entirely different with a new set of questions and a new hus history of this would emerge. And another very very important uh, area would be start mapping the inscriptions before they are lost. Hmm. And they are clear indication of the arrival of Brahmanical culture. And, and also when the, 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 we have become so Buddhist centric when it comes to uh, Ladakh, even we are not able to understand Buddhism properly because when Buddhism arrived, the local religion was there. What happened to Boon religion? How Boon responded to that? What happened to the uh, Brahmanical religion? How did they respond to that? Because they also, when the compromise is met, the, the dominant cult also introduces changes to accommodate these. So we think that it was some kind of linear process. Buddhism came, ate up the entire thing. So my request would be, please start looking with the available sources and start using the sources which have been brought to light. Even here, some of the sources which people have spoken about is again a clear indication of the kind of contact that we have. And, and that is where my strong plea would be that there is enough to be written on Ladakh and the entire history can easily be altered if we start looking right from very beginning Ladakh as a part of larger India, which uh, which was conceived there in 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 the in in, in the geographic geography of ancient India, Ladakh emerges. Forget about everything. If the when in Nilmat Puran, when Nilmat Puran is talking, Nilmat Puran is talking about Kashmir at the same time talk of, talking about this region as well. He is uh, the Nilmat Puran is describing about the people, the culture of this region. So even the composer of Nirmat Puran was familiar with this and they are not being treated as an alien. Hmm. They are being treated as a part of it. Hmm. So several, I mean, look at ethnography, look at the data that, is, that are available and all the narratives which are being used. Start looking at those narratives from different set of questions and a new history would emerge. And, after that, and, and once we start doing it, nobody would say, Hmm. There's the central orientation, central Asian orientation, exotic culture, and the land of Buddhism. It is indeed a land of Buddhism. But parallel to that, other religion also existed. Hmm. Because if they were not there, you cannot create this kind of memory, which gets reflected in their own narrative, and that too in a narrative which was constructed by the Lamas. Hmm.